Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and you all seemed very interested in exploring the Elder Evils and the Far Realm a bit more, so I got working on this video as soon as I could. This is a larger topic, and I'll most likely have to make more than one video on it, so subscribe, stay tuned, and check out the description of this video for an Elder Evil playlist when I get around to it and have finished other videos. In this video, I'll talk about the Elder Eternal Evils within Dungeons & Dragons lore, and they are Dendar the Night Serpent, Kazif the Chaos Hound, and Ityak Othil the Elf Eater. Now, Dendar the Night Serpent is considered an Elder Eternal Evil, uh, which is a Far Realm being, and she started her evil career that way, but later on in 4th edition, she was reclassified as a Primordial as well as an Elder Evil. Dendar is large, a very large snake, approximately 300 feet long, with blue-black scales and yellow eyes. She is a colossal outsider, a vile elder evil, and is as old as the Forgotten Realms themselves. Dendar is said to exist in the Fuga Plane, where she devours nightmares of the living. And once she has fed on enough human fear, she'll initiate the end of the world. Dendar is the beginner of the end, the destruction of the world, and when the time comes, it is said that even the gods will be unable to stop her. To some, she is Nidhogg, as d and is wont to pull from real-life mythology. Her beginnings are muddled, but most agree that she was created when the first being slept on the Prime Material Plane and had a nightmare. She slithers along any of the lower planes, the Fugue Plane being a realm of the dead that Kelimvor rules. The Fugue Plane is part of the Forgotten Realms, but not really in the whole greater cosmology. It's a neutral plane on the Astral Plane. Now, Dendar cultists are found mostly in Kalimport and the jungles of Cholt. Specifically, the followers in Cholt believe that when the end of the world comes, it will be Dendar who springs forth from an enormous iron door located in Cholt underneath the Peaks of Flame. Once out, she'll quickly fly up and devour the sun. Yuanti worship Dendar, but not all of them, and there are plenty of other crazed cultists that worship Dendar. In the 5th edition adventure Tomb of Annihilation, Dendar is mentioned a handful of times, and was a major part of the high-level Adventure League content that came out in conjunction with Tomb of Annihilation. Now, this module is numbered DDAL07-18, and is called Turn Back the Endless Night. And after reading, it's, it's a pretty epic, and it's intended for characters of 17th level or higher. Now, cultists are trying to release Dendar by opening the giant door beneath the Peaks of Flame, and it is up to you, the adventurers, to stop this from happening. If you fail and Dendar is released, well, it's bad. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll say spoilers here if you don't want to know, but this is honestly way too cool to not read out loud to you. The Night Serpent rises into the sky, glowing ever more in size, her jaws spread wide, the primordial swallows the sun as the world looks on in horror. Before the world freezes and all life dies, the Eater of Worlds wraps her endless coils around Tyrell and squeezes until the world shatters into millions of pieces of floating rock. A lucky few manage to escape through portals to other planes, but... In the realms, nothing living survives. I wouldn't want to be the players who have that on their conscience. Next is Kazif the Chaos Hound. Now, Kazif is another Elder Evil who was also reclassified as a Primordial in 4th edition. Taking the form of a giant hound, a mastiff with red eyes, maggoty fur, and skin barely covering his bones, his flesh oozes pus and he leaves pools of burning ichor wherever he touches the ground. He more or less looks undead, but isn't classified as undead. Kazif would roam the Outer Plains hunting and devouring faithful souls. Now, faithful souls are those who worship one god above all the others. And Kazif could eat other souls, but he found the faithful souls the most delicious. He never ate false souls or souls of the living, which were deemed, to him, unripened spirits. Any faithful that Kazif ate was gone forever a permanent and final destruction. And that character no longer exists. Not, not even the gods could bring them back. However, Kazif was imprisoned by the Faerunian gods. Realizing that he was nothing but trouble, a group of greater powers uh, denied others from interacting with Kazif. And with that, they hunted him down. 
After finding him, these gods bet Kazif that he would not be able to break a leash that was forged by Gond the Wonderbringer. Kazif was arrogant and took the bet, but was not stupid. In exchange for allowing the leash around his neck, the god Tyr had to place his right hand into the maw of Kazif. If Kazif was betrayed, he would bite down and devour the hand. So Gond slowly put the magical chain around Kazif's neck and tightened it, anchoring it to pandemonium, a plane within the Great Wheel cosmology. Mistra then created a self-repairing curtain of magical energy that would entrap Kazif further. Once he realized he could not escape, he bit off Tyr's hand, which is why you'll see art of Tyr as only having one hand. That divine hand has kept Kazif fed for a very long time. Now, Kazif was eventually freed. Uh, it occurred shortly after the Time of Troubles. Siric found him and set him free so he would hunt down the soul of Kalimvor. Mistra was tricked into taking away the magic that prevented Kazif from escaping, and the Chain of Gond was shattered with Siric's sword, Godsbane, which was the god Mask in disguise. And this is all part of the Time of Troubles, and if you're interested in that, there's a, a, a video up here, I think. Now, Kazif, on the hunt for Kelimvor, went to Faerun all the way to Blackstaff Tower in Waterdeep. There, a group of people including Kelimvor, Adon, the Deity Mask, and Lord Chess of Zentel Keep managed to re-imprison Kazif in an enchanted candle. They used an ancient ritual provided by the Deity Agma. However, Kazif was freed again when there was a rebellion against Siric. And I, I think the idea is that Kazif would help find Siric, and that's why he was released. The Chaos Hound ran around the Fugue Plain devouring souls until Kelimvor assumed the title of Lord of the Dead, becoming a deity. And with that, the rest of the Faerunian pantheon threatened to recapture Kazif, so he fled. Kazif now roams the Outer Plains, hunting the god Mask who betrayed him by assisting Kelimvor and putting him into that candle. Now, Kazif also found a purpose in offering arcane packs to a select few warlocks. And an undying warlock would be a fun choice to have Kazif as your patron. Finally, the Elf Eater. The one I was most excited to read up on. I mean, with a name like Elf Eater, you, you know exactly what it is, but at, at the same time, you don't? It's called Ithyak or Thiel. The Elf Eater is a creature that lurks in the depths of the Abyss and has been there since the beginning of the world. Created from the violence of Grumish and Corallon's blood during their epic fight, there's more info on that in an earlier video found in the top right corner or in the description below. But the short version is, the god of orcs and the god of the elves got into a fight. Where Corallon's blood fell sprang up the first elves, but where Corallon's blood mixed with Grumish's up sprang the elf eater. And after its creation, it quickly ran into the abyss to hide from Corallon and become a plague to the elves. A 30-foot tall monstrosity that stands on three enormous trunk-like legs. It kind of looks like a, a weird turtle. Its, its body is a flat blob of flesh with a domed carapace, under which is a toothless maw of flaps and skin constantly sucking and looking for food, which is, surprise, elves. The mouth can open very wide or shrink down and search for food. In the latter form, it kind of looks not unlike a, an anteater's mouth. It has tentacles everywhere that are used to grapple living creatures, and the elf eater has no eyes, no ears, but knows exactly everything in its surroundings, up to a five mile radius. Despite its odd legs, it can gallop at a surprisingly fast pace. Now, the elf eater only eats elves and can sustain itself for a long time on just a few elf souls. It gets no nutrients from dead elves. Even though he eats the whole elf, it is the soul that the elf eater is after. It can only make its way to the primatorial plane if summoned through a ritual. Now, there have been a number of times where enemies of the elves will summon the monster to aid their fight. And elves dread this monstrosity. And they share stories of it with their young, both remembering and honoring those who have died, but serving as a warning to younger elves the horror that could await them. From what I read, the constant fear of the Elf Eater is in the back of every elf's mind all the time. Then Malar enters the picture. See, Malar is a lesser deity of the hunt. He is known as the Beast Lord, and I've done a video or two about him. He pops up a few times when mentioning the Moonshay Isles because 
One of those islands, Moray, was under the control of lycanthropes that worshipped Malar. So now Malar is an evil deity that reflects killing more than hunting. You're not hunting for food or survival, you're hunting because of the kill. A Malarite relishes in stalking prey and ending its life. It's all about bloodlust. So now Malar had the power to summon Ityak or Thil for some reason, but not much is known about this. It might have been a partnership, or the Elf Eater might be under direct control by Malar. In early Faerun history, it was centuries between attacks, but now Malar ensures the Elf Eater arrives as soon as possible. The Elven community created a magical portal known as the Fey Alamtine in the Moonshay Isles, which was designed to protect them. With this magic, every elf community leader could activate the portal and allow elves to be transported to the Moonshay Isles. And from there, it was a simple boat ride to get to Evermeet, where they would be protected until the Elf Eater returned to the Abyss. Now, this worked for a while until Malar did some divination and discovered the whereabouts of this Fey Alamtine and unleashed the Elf Eater directly on it. Sinoria was the location, and after the Elf Eater's attack, the portal was destroyed. Ityak or Thiel ravaged much of the land and destroyed the capital city of the Elves in that region. All three of these Elder Evils have stats in both 3.5 and 2nd edition D&D, specifically in the Powers and Pantheons for 2nd edition, and the Champions of Ruin for 3.5. Both are linked in the description below. Now, my question for you, is your party up to take on Dendar the Night Serpent or the Elf Eater? An all-elf party whose quest it is to finally stop the Elf Eater? Now, you'd most likely start by banishing it back to the Abyss and then divine its location. But that would be an epic campaign through the Abyss to finally find the Elf Eater and destroy it once and for all. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you liked this video, let me know. And, and please, subscribe. Uh, new videos every week on the mythology of Dungeons & Dragons. Um, take care, everybody. I will see you all.